Ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Moscow. My name is Zograb Makian. I am doctor of medicine working in National Research Center of Obstetric Gynecology in Moscow. I am very appreciating the opportunities to present our experience about reproductive surgery on this great Congress. The new theory of embryogenesis, based on analysis of uterovaginal anomalies, comparatively with fundamental embryological investigations. The American Academy of Pediatrics reported that four persons of all newborns have congenital abnormalities. Incidence of genital malformations was 12%, which takes third position after heart and limb defects. In our Department of Operative Gynecology, the surgeries of genital anomalies reach up to 9%. The anatomies were diagnosed with ultrasound, MRI, and verified during laparoscopy. Surgical treatment was performed in accordance with anomalies type, patient symptoms, and concomitant pathology by European consensus guidelines. The European consensus based on the classification of American Society for Reproductive Medicine, which provides a precise diagnosis and appropriate surgical treatment. Congenital uterovaginal malformations are defined as deviations from normal embryogenesis, which recapitulates phylogenesis. Each variant of anomalies corresponds to persistent developmental stages such as Müller and Dobbs aplasia, fusion defects, persistence of intermedial septum. The biogenetic law postulates that ontogeny or individual morphogenesis recapitulates phylogeny or evolutionary early developmental stages. The duplicated bicornate uteri are normal, normal for other mammalians that provide gestation of several embryos. In humans, the unicavital uterus is supplied by both uterine vessels for optimal blood supply during gestation of one or two embryos. Professor Johannes Peter Müller described the early stages of human embryo development by simple light microscopy in the beginning of 19th century. The researches of Professor Müller had improved most important science in anatomy, physiology, and particularly increased understanding reproductive systems development. In the original Mullerian theory, the mesonephral ducts, or so-called Wolfian ducts, grow caudally just below of the gonadal ridges. The paramesonephral ducts, or called Mullerian, grow autonomously at the parallel parts of the mesonephral ducts. The paramesonephral ducts form the fallopian tubes, uterus and vagina. The mesonephral ducts regress in female embryo. Uterus develops by fusion of both Müller and ducts together and reduction of intermedial septum by reabsorption in craniocaudal direction. The clinical cases well presented comparatively with embryogenesis because they correspond to developmental stages. The uterovaginal aplasia corresponds to the earliest stage of development. During laparoscopy, recognize two types of uterovaginal aplasia. Most of them had non-functional rudiments as presented in the left corner they underwent the creation of neovagina. Some patients had functional rudiments which presented on the movie on the right corner. The rudiments have endometrial cavities and in both cases the uterine rudiments detected in the crossing area between fallopian tubes with broad and ovarian ligaments. The functional uterine rudiments with endometrial cavities ovarian and external endometriosis removed laparoscopically. These patients may be carried out for oocyte donation by IVF in surrogacy program. 
fusion defects of Mueller and ducts result in symmetric malformation such as double uterus, bicornuot, and septate uterus. The clinical cases of completely duplicate uterus and vagina possibly arose during developmenting stages of period Mueller and ducts before their fusion. Optimistic reproductive prognosis was observed in half cases with double uterus, which depends on the uterine blood supply. For estimation of myometrial blood perfusion, we involved the new method of functional MRI using the intravenous injection of gadolinium contrast. Dynamic monitoring of serial images evaluates the blood perfusion by digital diagram and color mapping. The asymmetric perfusion of duplicated uterus was detected in some cases by functional MRI. This might be important when concerning IVF and embryo transferring. Completely septate uterus was developed by fusion of two hemiotery and lack of intermedial septum reabsorption. Successful pregnancy without metroplasty possible in half cases and depends on vascularization of the septum. Marker circulation was found to be reduced in the complete intrauterine septum in 22% as compared with microcirculation in the myometrium, resulting need to resection of the septum. The incomplete reduction of intermedial septum during subsequent stages results in a subseptate uterus or incomplete uterus. Functional MRI reveals the uterus enhances gradually and demonstrates a hypersignal. Microcirculation reduced in the septum up to 32% that explains the high risk of pregnancy losses in 97% of cases. Hysteroresectoscopy identified the poor blood flow in the fibrous septum and histological morphometry of the septum detected malformation of microcirculatory blood vessels. The reconstructive surgical correction assisted reproductive methods and IVF appeared to improve reproductive outcomes in 57% of cases. Most of them had concomitant pathologies, but endometriosis was still a major factor in obstructive and non-obstructive or symmetric anomalies independent from menstrual outflow obstruction. Endometriosis was also detected in 20% in patients with complete uterovaginal aplasia without functional endometrial cavities. Multiple hypotheses have been postulated to explain the pathogenesis of endometriosis. The most widely accepted theory is the retrograde menstruation and implantation of endometrial heterotopies. However, these theories fail to explain the presence of endometriosis in patients with complete uterovaginal aplasia, in female fetuses, and especially in patients with disorders of sex development with male gonads and male karyotype. The primary question to understanding the etiology of endometriosis or endometrial ectopia is determining the origin of utopic or normally cited endometrium. Recent embryological investigations of human embryos have revealed some nuances. We observed the histology of human embryo in Carnegie Collection, which served in embryo unit of Australia New Wales University. The histological images of early embryo on the third week of development that corresponds to Carnegie stages 13 demonstrate there are two mesonephric ducts located on the paramedial sites parallel to the big mesonephros. There are no other paramesonephral ducts existed. Other histological images of human female embryo on the Carnegie stages 22, approximately equal to week 8 of development, also demonstrates the mesonephral ducts located on the paramedial sites, the medial ducts, which signed as paramesonephral, may be potentially correspond to the genital regions.
In the Langmans medical embryology, there is an electron micrograph of a mouse female embryo. Mesonephral ducts, black rowheads, are located on the paramedial sides of the mesonephras, and they conjoin together. The genital ridges are all growing immediately below of the gonads. The part of the intersection between mesonephral ducts with gonadal ridges corresponds to the uterine folds. This picture of an early stage of development corresponds to the anatomy of uterovaginal aplasia, where uterine rudiments detected in the area of intersection between fallopian tubes with broad and ovarian ligaments. A systematic comparison of uterovaginal malformations with contemporary embryological investigations allowed us to formulate new theory of embryogenesis on the right corner. The mesonephral ducts form the fallopian tubes and vagina. The uterus derives in crossing area between mesonephral ducts with gonadal ridges. The paramesonephral ducts are absent. In support of our new theory, we found some very important evidence in the literature. Dr. Hashimoto, by electron microscopy on the same stages, detected the active cell-to-cell -cell communications between the Mullerian ducts and Wolfian cells. The Christopher Hurst investigated in utero exposure to teratogen during the critical periods of female rats' organogenesis. There are evidences of uterine development in the area of intersection between mesonephral ducts with gonadal ridges and fusion of both uterine folds together. The key differences between existing and the proposed new theory I follows, you can see in table. In Mullerian theory, the paramesonephral ducts forming uterus, fallopian tubes, and vagina, and mesonephral ducts regress in female embryos. In new theory, the mesonephral ducts form fallopian tubes and vagina. The uterus derives in crossing area between mesonephral ducts with gonadal ridges. Paramesonephral ducts don't exist. There are two principal processes in uterine organogenesis. The intersection of gonadal ridges with mesonephral ducts to form the uterine folds with an endometrial cavity and the fusion of the both uterine folds together to form the unicavitor or normal uterus. The new insight of the theory that gonads and endometrium derive from germline epithelium of gonadal ridges. The germline epithelium of the indifferent gonads originates from primordial germ cells at an early stage of development which migrate by amoeboid movement from yolk sac through peritoneum to the dorsolateral gonadal ridges. We suppose the endometrium, such as ovarian germline epithelium, derives from the gonadal ridges, which are composed from polypotential germ cells. In the uterine folds, there are closer cell-to-cell -cell communications. Polypotential germ cells differentiate and grow into myometrium and endometrial layer. If these germ cells fail to reach the ridges and stay in the peritoneal cavity, then may be transforming into endometrial enterotopies. This mechanism could be the key to understanding the enigmatic etiology of endometriosis and also may be explained the high incidence of endometriosis in patients with uterovaginal malformations. Our researchers published in Organogenesis Journal. I hope the new theory may be induced future embryological investigations, and I believe the collaboration between clinicians and embryologists may be effective in comparative investigations. Thank you for attention, and I hope to see you again in the other Congress. Thank you.